And you have to understand, uh, we first went through Russia, Russia, Russia. It was all bullshit. <laughs> How come we have many of the experts from CNN and many other networks, if you call CNN a network, I don't personally, I think this is the part that we really need to take personal responsibility for. Saturday, I had a little low-grade fever. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, actually, probably a GI thing. Do you want him to rein in Robert Mueller? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. <laughs> Millions, as you witness, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. And we're prepared to do vast numbers. Uh, I think we're in great shape. I hope that's the case. I hope that we're going to have leftovers so we can help other people, other countries. Everybody who needs what will be able to get a ventilator. Uh, look, look, don't be a cutie pie, okay? Well, you know, everyone who needs one. Nobody's ever done what we've done. Nobody's done anything like we've been able to do. And everything I took over was a mess. It was a broken country in so many ways, in so many ways other than this. We had a bad testing system. We had a bad stockpile system. We had nothing in the stockpile system. So I wouldn't tell me what you tell, what, you know, like uh, being a wise guy. Go ahead. Uh, no, I think the Washington Post covers us very inaccurately, covers me very inaccurately. I saw the story. I think it's a disgrace. But it's the Washington Post, and I guess we have to live with it. It's a very, it's a very inaccurate, quiet, quiet. Then Bob Mueller testified. That didn't work out so well for the other side. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, I, I know that you continue to say you asked me. Okay, hold it one second. Any other questions from any other people? Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I had, uh, I had Nancy Pelosi sitting four seats away, and I'm saying things that a lot of people wouldn't have said, but I meant every, <laughs> I meant every word of it. Say hello to the people of Utah and tell them, I'm sorry about Mitt Romney. I'm sorry. What, what do you know about Who are you with? Who are you with? I'm with NPR. Okay, go ahead. You, you're not up. Go ahead, please. Do you support uh, any money for the Postal Service? So I can comment on that, Mr. Go ahead, President. Postal Service. So we authorized in the last CARE Act uh, over $10 billion of a loan. Uh, my team is already actively working on that with the Postal Service if they need the money, and we're, we're dealing with that. The Postal Service is a joke. Nancy Pelosi is a horrible person, and she wanted to impeach a long time ago when she said, I pray for the president. I pray for the president. She doesn't pray. She may pray, but she prays for the opposite. <laughs> but I doubt she prays at all. I mean, Nadler, I know him much of my life. He's fought me in New York for 25 years. I always beat him. And I had to beat him another time. And I'll probably have to beat him again. When on January 31st, I instituted the ban, Joe Biden went crazy. He said, you don't need the ban. You, he didn't go crazy. Look, he, just, he didn't even know what the hell the ban was. But he, so he didn't go crazy. But he did call me xenophobic. Wait a minute. He called me xenophobic. He called me racist because he has since apologized, and he said, I did the right thing. So when you say, why didn't you this? Every Democrat thought I made a mistake when I did it. I saved tens of thousands, maybe hundreds well, of thousands of lives that by putting time that you bought. The argument is that you bought yourself some time, and you didn't use it to prepare hospitals. You didn't use it to ramp up testing. Right you're now, so, nearly you're so, 20 million people You're so people disgraceful. When I first got to know him, Jim Jordan, when I first got to know Jim, I said, uh, huh. Never wears a jacket. <laughs> the hell's going on? He's obviously very proud of his body. <laughs> you know you're a fake. You know that your whole network, the way you cover it, is fake. And most of you, and not all of you, but the people are wise to you. That's why you have a lower, a lower approval rating than you've ever had before, times probably three. Yeah, yeah Mr. President, after the presentation we just saw about the heat and the humidity, 
Is it dangerous for you to make people think they would be safe by going outside in the heat, considering that so many people are dying in Florida, considering that this virus has had an outbreak in Singapore, places that are yeah, here, hot and are humid? Here we go. The new, the new headline is Trump asks people to go outside. That's dangerous. Here we go. Same old group. You're the president, and people tuning into these briefings, they want to get information and guidance and want to know what to do. They're hey, not looking for up, rumors. I'm the president, and you're fake news. I know you well, because I know the guy. I see what he writes. He's a total faker. So why was the United States not prepared with more testing? We were very supplies? prepared. Uh, the only thing we weren't prepared for was the uh, the media. The media has not treated it fairly. I'll tell you how prepared I was. Uh, I called for a ban from people coming in from China long before anybody thought it was. In fact, it was your network. I believe they called me a racist because I did that. Uh, it was many of the people in the room, they call me racist and other words uh, because I did that, because I went so early. So when you say we weren't prepared, had I let these tens of thousands of people come in from China a day, we would have had something right now that would have been, uh, you wouldn't have even recognized it compared to where we are. We have a sleepy guy in a basement of a house that the press is giving a free pass to, who doesn't want to do debates because of COVID. And lots of things are happening, right? And I watched a couple of interviews, and I say, oh, I look forward to this. But they're keeping him sheltered because of the coronavirus. And he's not moving around. He's not moving too much. What do you say to Americans who are upset with you over the way you downplayed this crisis over the last couple of months? It's people like you and CNN that say things like that, that uh, it's why people just don't want to listen to CNN anymore. You could ask a normal question. The statements I made are, I want to keep the country calm. I don't want panic in the country. I could cause panic much better than even you. I could do much. I would make you look like a minor league player. But you know what? I don't want to do that. I want to have our country be calm and strong and fight and win. And it will go away. And it is incredible, the job that all of these people are doing, putting them all together, the job that they're doing. I am very proud of the job they're doing, that Mike Pence is doing, that the task force has done, that Honeywell and Procter and & Gamble and Mike and all of these people have done. I'm very proud. It's, it's almost a miracle, and it is, the way it's all come together. And instead of asking a nasty, snarky question like that, you should ask a real question. So we have a lot of very angry media all around this room, and they want one of these seats. But because of social distancing, we are keeping them empty. And they are keeping them empty. Will there ever be a time when all of those really angry, angry people who don't like me much to start off with, but now they really don't like me, will there ever be a time when these seats are full, like full to the brim like it used to be, where people are almost sitting on each other's lap. And this whole row over here is packed. And now they're outside wanting to get in, and they're very jealous of all of these reporters. Will we ever have that again? Or is that something that will be, you know, it'll look like this forever? Go ahead, ask it's, a question. The, the question, sir, was what did you want President Zelensky to do about Pres Vice President Biden and his son, Hunter? Are you talking to me? Yeah, it was just a follow-up of what I just asked listen, you, sir. Listen, you ready? We have the president of Finland. Ask him a question. I have one for him. I just wanted to follow up on the one that I asked you, which did was, you hear what me? did you want Did you hear to me? Yes, Ask sir. him a question. I, I will. But I've my given you a long answer. Ask <laughs> this gentleman a question. Don't be rude. No, sir. I don't want to be rude. I just wanted you to have a chance to answer the question that I asked I've you. I've answered everything. It's a whole hoax. And you know who's playing into the hoax? People like you and the fake news media that we have in this country. And I say, in many cases, the corrupt media, because you're corrupt. Much of the media in this country is not just fake, it's corrupt. Uh, they go up to about 50 miles, over 50 miles, as a matter of fact, straight up. And do they immediately come straight down? They or do. Or do they tour around? Uh, they'll get about 10 minutes of weightlessness uh, before they come back to Earth. Um, so it's not so much of a tour around, but just a, a period of time where you get to experience weightlessness. Would you do it? I would absolutely do it. Are you kidding? In a heartbeat. Um, and in I'll, fact... I'll pass. <laughs> no. Yesterday, Jared Kushner said the notion of the federal stockpile was it's supposed to be our stockpile. It's not supposed to be state stockpiles that they then use. What did he mean by our 
Oh, what are you asking? And I mean, yeah. even the fact that taxpayers from What's every that? state gotcha. pays for gotcha. it. No, it's not a gotcha. Hour. What hour, you know what hour means? United States of America. That's what it means. It means the states. Hour. Hour. It means the United States of America. And then we take that hour and we distribute it to the states. So why did not you say that we it's not to. supposed to be state stockpiles that they Because we use. need it for the government and we need it for the federal government. But to when the states, the states are in trouble, no, to then also who are keep. giving it to if it's not to the states? To keep to keep for our country because the federal government needs it too, not just the states. But out of that, we oftentimes choose, as an example, we have almost 10,000 ventilators, and we are ready to rock with those ventilators. We're going to bring them to various areas of the country that need them. But when he says our, he's talking about our country. He he's talking, excuse me, sir, he's talking about the federal government. I mean, it's such a basic, simple question, and you try and make it sound so bad. You ought to be, I, I'm you ought to be ashamed to of yourself. No, you know what? You ought to be ashamed. Way, Secretary it's such Azar. a simple question. He said our. An hour means for the country. An hour means for the states because the states are a part of the country. Don't make it sound bad. Don't make it sound bad. Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead, back here. You just asked your question. You just asked your question in a very nasty tone. Let's go. You didn't give me an answer. Please. Mr. President, I gave you a perfect answer. You know it. Go ahead. Despite the nearly 1.8 million tests that you say the United States has done, the Inspector General for the Department of Health and Human Services released a report today, a survey of more than 300 hospitals across the country. And the number one complaint from those hospitals were severe shortages of testing supplies and well, a really long wrong. wait time. I mean, it's a week wrong. or longer. And did I hear the word Inspector General? Really? Uh, it's wrong. And they'll talk to you about it. It's wrong. But this is your own government. Uh, it's well. Where did he come from, the Inspector General? What's his name? It came from the Inspector General. No, what's his name? What's I his don't name? know his name. Well, off the tell top me of his my name. Head. Let me know. Okay. Give me the name of the Inspector General. Uh, could politics be entered into that? Go ahead, this please. Is our if I can follow up on, on this question of the HHS Inspector General, and by the way, her name was Christy Grimm, and it wasn't so much her opinion, but they interviewed. Uh, 323 different hospitals. Well, it still could be her opinion. Uh, when was she appointed? When was she appointed? Uh, I'm not sure when she Would was appointed. Would you do me a favor? Let I'll, me know. I'll, I'll check. No, no, let me know now. I have to know now, John. Let me know now. Because we are doing an incredible job in testing. Uh, we are doing a better job than anybody in the world right now in testing. There's nobody close. And other nations admit this. Other nations have admitted it very strongly. Other nations are calling us, wanting to know about our testing. Let me know when she was appointed, would you? But specifically, ahead, what please. she was saying was that there had been a delay in the in OK, lab, thank lab you very lab. much. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you. I was going to answer your question you asked me. She was appointed in January of this year to her current position Good. as the principal deputy inspector okay, general. We're going to take a look at it. Go ahead. How long has that person been in government? Could I uh, this did serve in the previous administration. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Oh, well, I see. You didn't tell me that, John. This year. You didn't tell me that. Well, did serve in the previous administration. You mean the Obama administration. Thank you for telling me that. See, there's a typical well, fake news deal. Was, you asked no, me when look, she was appointed. Look, I told you when she was appointed. You're a third-rate reporter. And what you just said is a disgrace. Okay? You asked me, you said, sir, just got appointed. Take a look at what you said now. I said, when did they, when did this person, how long in government? But, but well, it was appointed in the Obama administration. Thank you very much, John. Sir? Thank you very much. You will never make it. Go ahead, please. Uh, uh, on, the, on the ventilators, well, that's I mean, a terrible best for Admiral Jawar, but. Yeah, please. Thank you, Mr. President. The Paycheck Protection Program has gotten off to a confusing start for small businesses. I don't think so. I because, think it's done well, very well, well. Wells Fargo has stopped taking applications. Bank of America Not anymore, they haven't. prioritized taking applications from clients that were already Bank borrowers. of America has so been the leader, taking tremendous numbers of applications. And, of course, there may have been, they wanted to have a slightly different application. They wanted to have a little different information. Uh, but Bank of America has been a leader. They're number one in terms of applications. I wish you'd ask the question differently. Why don't you say it's gotten off to a tremendous start? But there are some little glitches, which, by the way, have been worked out. It would be so much nicer if you do that. But you're just what incapable of asking a question Sir, in a positive way. Is the federal government? It's it just I wish, I wish we had a fair media in this country, and we really don't. Speaking of unfair, go ahead. Mr. President, the acting secretary.